and welcome to part 30, my report on the McCarrick Report by Patrick Parson. We are now on page 87 of the McCarrick Report in chapter 9, beginning with section D, Incident at a Newark Catering Hall, January 1990. We've already seen sections A, B, and C, which described reports by specific victims of McCarrick. This section describes an incident witnessed and discussed by a priest, along with two bishops, on January 25, 1990, when McCarrick was Archbishop of Newark. In 1990, Monsignor Botino was vocation director under Bishop McHugh, who had been consecrated a bishop by McCarrick in 1988. Bishop McHugh had Monsignor Botino drive him to the rear of a catering hall in Newark, where McCarrick, Bishop Smith, and a young adult cleric were already seated. Although the hall was large enough for 500 people, other than the kitchen staff, there were only the five individuals attending dinner, which turned out to be the celebration of the two-year anniversary of the consecration of both McHugh and Smith by McCarrick. It appeared McCarrick had been drinking, possibly to the point of inebriation. The young cleric looked nervous and was silent. McCarrick told Botino he was the new Holy See attaché at the United Nations, which was a surprise to Botino. McCarrick also asked if he could count on Botino to share confidential information with McCarrick from the diplomatic pouches Botino would be receiving. After Botino said the information should remain confidential, McCarrick said, You're good, but I think I can count on you. While McCarrick spoke with the two bishops, he blurted out, I deserve New York. Botino later concluded this was expressing McCarrick's desire to replace Cardinal O'Connor. Bishop Smith changed the subject by making a toast in honor of the anniversary of Bishops Smith and McHugh's consecration as bishops. Everyone stood up for the toast except the 59-year-old McCarrick. After everyone sat back down, McCarrick began talking to the two bishops, and while doing so, moved his fingers up and down the young cleric's crotch area. Botino described the cleric as being paralyzed and with his eyes open wide like a deer in the headlights. It was clear that Bishop Smith and McHugh were aware of what McCarrick was doing to the young cleric. McHugh's face displayed surprise, anger, and indignation, while Smith had a surprised look with wide open eyes and a gaping mouth and they could both see the terrified expression on the young cleric's face. Looking at Botino, Bishop McHugh crunched his eyes as a signal not to say anything. After 20 minutes, McHugh and Botino left, it being clear to everyone, except perhaps for McCarrick, they were leaving because of McCarrick's actions with the cleric. McCarrick tried to convince them to stay for dinner, saying he had room for them to sleep overnight in Newark, 
but McHugh declined. As they drove away, McHugh commended Botino for the way he handled what he had seen at the table. When Botino answered he couldn't really believe what he was seeing, McHugh said, and this is a quote, Well, you know, sometimes the Archbishop says things and does things that are very different, unquote. Botino and McHugh never spoke again about the incident. Botino informed his spiritual advisor, now deceased, about it a week later to express how disturbed he was by what happened, but talked to no one else in hierarchy about it until 2018 when describing the incident in a letter to Apostolic Nuncio Archbishop Christophe Pierre, stating his purpose in writing was partially to assist the Church in the then current situation with McCarrick and to, quote, relieve any burden of conscience that I had about the incident, unquote. And Botino could not remember the young cleric's name. There is no evidence that either Bishop Smith or Bishop McHugh reported the Catering Hall incident to any Holy See official. And that concludes Chapter 9 of the McCarrick Report. We will use our next segment to highlight what we found in it and see what conclusions we can draw. Although one conclusion we can draw already is our ever-present need for protection and forgiveness, which we may request with the Fatima prayer. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy.